This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is November 14th, 2020. This is show number 175. Well, Nick, uh, we're starting out higher yet again, a Monday rally. Yeah, I got a little Monday rally so far. And um, again, uh, not a bad way to start the week, but we see this quite often. The one thing I always want to tell everybody is that uh, when, when you have a Monday rally, you do see a lot of backing and filling very, very often. So we have to watch for that. Really, the only sector that I'm seeing that looks a little bit weak right now is the energy space. Um, but overall, not not a bad way to start the week so far. All right. So how did we wind up last week? Uh, we couldn't get together on Friday. So just a review of how the market closed on Friday. Yeah, so Friday was a, a little bit of a of a down day, but it wasn't a terrible day. It was really just a, more of a flattish type day. We started out pretty weak, and then the markets rallied back up. Uh, they finished off their lows, but still a little, little bit on the weaker side. Okay, so so then uh, we see the Monday morning rally, and uh, as you've mentioned before, we've got a quadruple witching hour, which you seem to be the only one that keeps track of anymore. That's right. Uh, we do have options expiration coming up uh, this Friday, so everybody should take note of that. Um, this is not only a normal options X, this is what we call a quadruple witching options expiration. That means we're going to have four different asset classes set to expire this week. It's a time for a lot of institutional game playing. You're going to hear a lot of ridiculous upgrades and downgrades by the big uh, Wall Street firms. And you also will hear a lot of rumors. Some of them could be true. But for the most part, most of them are false. You'll hear a lot of takeover rumors. You'll hear all sorts of stuff like that. I always tell uh, all of my members, this is the week to uh, be on the guarded side. It's the real shark week out there and expect the unexpected. So a uh, very, very good uh, time, uh, especially with a quad witch, to be even a little bit more cautious. All right. And uh, we should note that this is the last quadruple witching hour of the year quadruple witching day and that means something too doesn't it that does so this is end of quarter uh basically you have four of them a year and uh, again the next uh we'll get a contract rollover on the futures going forward uh that will expire this coming friday on the s&p 500 so yeah this is a very very important time frame as we roll into the new quarter and again those of you that trade futures you're going to have to move your futures contracts over to the March contract as December is set to expire. So uh, very, very important stuff as you go into the new year. Interesting, interesting. So uh, looking at gold and silver, they've taken a bit of a hit today. But yeah, that... you do have, yeah, they're, they're yeah, down a little, little bit, bit. But, you know, they, they've chopped around, and I think we're still in that choppy phase. I know gold had a really good rally last week, and then uh, it stalled out a little bit today. It's down down a touch. I don't think we can make too much out of it. Gold futures down about 15 points as we speak. GLD today down $1.26. Uh, if you're looking over at silver futures down about uh, 10, 11 cents at the moment. I, I, I don't think we can make too much out of it. I think we're really just in that options X period. Um, just expect things to just get chopped around a little bit. Yeah. So choppiness, it's kind of just more of the same. And the fact is that. Uh, that we're really, uh, really in the same place we've been since August. Yeah, when you look at uh, the precious metals, um, you really just have to look and say, all right, we're just making a bigger, longer-term consolidation pattern. And um, again, you know, there's nothing bad when that happens. This is just the market's way of taking a break. And again, we wait, wait on those patterns, let them really, really develop and form. And then they'll give you the bigger move. But right now, we're just, I think we're still just seeing a lot more backing and filling. And, and there's nothing wrong when that happens. Okay, and, and it's kind of what we've come to expect here. So not much on the uh, gold front. But the fact is, a lot of stuff's going on. What has the election factoring into it now? By many accounts, it appears that uh, Biden will, in fact, be the next president. 
We're not going to debate that. But as far as how you see the market right now, what, what's well, its effect on it? Yeah, I, I think it's going to affect a lot of different things because the two policies are completely different. One is more of a pro-growth policy, lower taxes uh, with, with President Trump. You also have um, you know, a lot of uh, a market participants uh, that, will, that have had really, really good profits over the years. So if Joe Biden gets in, I think they're going to you know, lock in their, in their, their gains. And I think you got to be really, really careful going forward. Plus, if a Biden administration gets in, I don't think that's going to really be uh, pro fossil fuels. I think fossil fuels could have a hard time going going forward as well. Um, plus, Joe Biden has already said that he is looking to raise taxes. And if that happens, especially the corporate tax rate, that makes America less competitive. That will hurt exports. So I, I think there's a lot of pros and uh, pros for Donald Trump to be the president. Um, I think there's a lot of cons if Joe Biden is a president. The other thing that we don't talk about all that much would be the dollar, right? The dollar has been really tanking, and it's down again today. Um, so, again, if, if Donald Trump does become the president, I think the dollar will start to strengthen. So, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, right now, it does look like Joe Biden could be the, uh, the next president of the United States, and, and I don't think that's positive for the dollar. Okay. Well, you know, as a wise man once said, it ain't over till it's over. And certainly the fat lady has not yet sung, so we will see what happens. But certainly on the legal front, it appears that uh, Biden's destined to be the next president. So you take that with all the economic baggage that comes along with a Biden administration, and you act accordingly. In any event, that's it for today. We will go more in depth tomorrow. Make sure you go over and take a look at Nick's site in themoneystocks.com where his latest trading advances, as well as other important information. The Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Perry Lutz. Emails, your questions, your comments, and your issues to KL at PerryLutz.com. Nick, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good, Kerry. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01.